Hey guys and welcome to World of Warships with Villevu. In today's replay I want to talk about the tier 8 Russian destroyer Tashkent. So guys, uh, as I said before, I always try to pick the games that have the biggest potential to actually teach you something new about tactics and, and ways of enjoying your gameplay more. They are not meant to show some sort of monster damage games or show off some sort of um, mastery of uh, sailing a particular ship. Uh, I don't pick my best games. I usually pick the games that have a chance of actually teaching something new. And if you haven't seen it yet, I would like to encourage you to check out my last video in which I explain the best tips and tricks on how to sail the tier 7 Japanese destroyer the Hatsuharu. The link should be popping up in the top right corner of the screen right now. And now let's get back to this Tashkent game. So, in this game, I'm teaming up with New Switch 9, uh, who is sailing the exact same Tashkent as I am. And also, on our division, there's a tier 8 Japanese carrier, the Shohaku, and is being driven by Kuluch. So, the point of this video today is to show you just how much of a dominating factor a good teammate can be and uh, what I want to show you right now is the fact that me and New Switch seem to have really good synergy when it comes to sailing our ships in formation not only the Tashkans but pretty much every ship we decide to sail together and through most of this game we will actually be sailing in formation and attacking the same targets at the same time and uh, also another thing you will see in the chat in a second Newswatch will admit to not knowing just how much damage you can deal with your AP rounds on the Tashkent, especially when engaging battleships that are tier or two tiers lower than you are. But attacking the same tier ships is also giving very good results. And now as we encounter our first enemy, I'm switching back to DHE rounds as it is a destroyer. And we both open up on it and uh, do really short work of this destroyer. So as you can see both of our destroyers are moving in a big fleet of enemy battleships. Uh, this area of the map is known for uh, being the battleship area because it has got a lot of space and you know, allows you to maneuver and avoid torpedoes. So as soon as we deal with this Hatsuharu, I will be able to show you just how much fun you can have with your AP rounds in uh, the Tashkent when engaging enemy battleships. So now that the Hatsuharu is dead, I'm switching back to my AP and I'm taking the Colorado on my aim. It's a uh, Battleship that is a tier lower than uh, the Tashkent, and I just want you to observe how much damage you can deal to the Colorado by uh, by aiming at its superstru superstructure. Especially, I would like to add, especially if you pick ships that don't seem to have taken any damage yet. Just just look at this: two and a half thousand, another thousand, and with the rate of fire of the Tashkent, you know all those. A uh, thousand, two thousand salvos uh, will amount to quite a lot of damage, and uh, you can actually deal quite a lot of damage like this. So we shot at this Colorado for a moment, and uh, it seems that we are overstaying our welcome. There is a turf that's moving in on our position from behind, and uh, I speed up and uh, basically just shoot one cheeky volley towards the pits as I leave and as you can see that gives me 1900 damage and you know all this really adds up so I'm thinking about uh, choosing the next target when I realized that uh, Kuluch in his uh, carrier may be actually in, in danger because of the Amagi and the Tepets moving in on, its on his position so I turn around quickly and uh, decide to engage 
the Tepid's first and then the Amagi, but this is the moment where Kuluk points out that there is a destroyer threatening our cup. So, looking on the map and realizing that I am the closest ship that is actually going to be able to deal with the destroyer quickly, I turn back towards the center of the map with the intention of en engaging the destroyer and uh, maybe even protecting our turret that is really close to the destroyer. And this is the moment where we actually do break formation and um, New Swatch de decides to pursue the Amagi uh, together with Kuluk's um, torpedo bombers. And I'm slowly starting to harass the Fubuki as I'm moving in on its, on its position. First shots connecting, 1000 damage, another 1000. And as you can see, one of the previous uh, enemies that I've been engaging managed to destroy my, re my rear turret, which in a way is not such a bad thing to, to have because that way you don't have to worry about the rear turret being al aligned and you can basically point the front of your ship towards the enemies, making you the smallest target possible. And even those two turrets, as long as you just, your aim is true, you can do a lot of damage in a really, really short time. So, as I'm dealing with this uh, Fubuki, Newswatch and Kulu uh, together managed to get rid of the Amagi that was moving aggressively north. And now we both decide to move south and um, uh, in a second I will point out the Colorado as our potential next target. There will be a little change of plans though, because uh, there will be a, another battleship popping up to my left in a moment, and that will be the tier 6 uh, New Mexico, which in theory at least should give me an even bigger potential to deal damage. So what I do now, I switch to AP and I start engaging it, knowing that my smoke is ready to be used, but I want to tempt the, color, the New Mexico to shoot at me first. So. That's where I'm popping the smoke and I'm quickly slowing down because I saw the muzzle flashes coming from the New Mexico's guns and that way I managed to encourage the enemy ship to waste uh, this salvo on me um, and uh, basically save the life of some of my teammates. So I stay in smoke and I know I'm very safe here, 9.4 kilometers is the distance to the New Mexico and this is really easy to lead the shots and just deal a lot of damage as you can see those uh, every single salvo is giving me a lot of damage anywhere between a thousand and two thousand damage per salvo and that's only with those two turrets operational if there was a third one I would have been probably breaching about two and a half maybe sometimes even three thousand damage per salvo Seeing that the New Mexico is not really posing a threat anymore and I should be able to deal with the New Mexico on my own, Newswatch continues to harass the Colorado which is protecting the enemy cap. And as you can see the torpedoes coming in from uh, Kulu's torpedo bombers finish off the New Mexico and uh, I'm free to move again so I pop my uh, speed boost and uh, move full steam ahead and then for a moment here I'm considering engaging that Aoba uh, to the east but I see the drain of fire going in its direction and decide that uh, there's not really any point and the Aoba will die before I reach it and that's exactly what happens. So I utilize the leftover of that speed boost and I'm moving full steam ahead towards the south in order to engage the Colorado. And as you saw on the team list, uh, between the three of us we've managed to kill half of the enemy team so far.
sailing with new swatch is always a lot of fun and uh, there is only one k beat or actually two when you think about them now uh, to sailing him one is that he is a filthy kill stealer so um, he will uh, definitely uh, pick off two kills that uh, might have been mine that was two and a half thousand damage by the way that's one of them right now and uh, second is that I don't know why, but uh, maybe because we usually do sail in really tight formations. Is that every single game I'm, I'm having with New Switch, at least once we will have a collision, a while in game, in every single one of them, without fail. And I've played quite a lot of games with, with uh, this player. Um, I guess must be our magnetic personalities. So we're moving south now and I'm um, basically announcing to New Swatch that I will be using AP rounds on the carrier as well. I'm hoping to score uh, Citadel hits and they, should be, they shouldn't usually be a problem uh, for the Tashkent. Uh, the 130mm guns are more than enough to uh, penetrate the uh, hole in the deck of uh, the Shokaku. But, uh, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but most of those shots I'll be firing right now are actually going to miss and uh, this is not a replay so you can see exactly where I'm aiming and I really don't understand how it happens that I managed to fail to connect uh, those shots. Uh, but now I'm back on target and uh, I'm already dealing some damage. Uh, no citadels because the Shokaku is basically pointing its bow towards me, so um, it's a bit harder for um, Destroyer to, to score citadel hits like this. So I'm almost about to kill, I'm just about to kill the Shokaku, when obviously new switches um, rounds finish it off and uh, this filthy kill stealer is taking away another one of my kills. Oh and guys, uh, just in case you didn't realize I was joking, I, I really don't believe in the whole uh, kill sling fad. Uh, this is a game where the win matters the most. And I really don't see the point of holding a grudge against someone who is actually helping you to win. So, uh, yeah, just, you know, kill steal away if you want. You know, I'll give you all my kills if, if that means that I'm gonna be only winning. Moving on to the final battle result screen. 165,000 of profit and 3,000 of experience. Uh, two kills, uh, one fire, and 172 shots under the target, and that basically translates into um, the three of us dominating the top uh, of the team list with Newswatch the kill stealer paying for the kill stealing by taking the fourth place, obviously. And those 146 shots. Uh, that landed, uh, some of them were bounces, uh, gave me 47,000 damage of pure AP damage and uh, as you saw the AP rounds, I was using them exclusively on uh, battleships in this game. So that just gives you an idea of how much damage you can actually deal in optimal conditions. And this game gave me 143,810 profit uh, running on a standard account. So guys, just to recap, I wanted to give you a couple of thoughts on the benefits of sailing uh, the Tashkent in a division. Uh, you basically get to use double the, the amount of smokes because you can share your smoke together with your teammate. And um, if you synchronize targeting the same targets, you can actually turn away whole fleets with just two, two tiny destroyers. As you could see there, we were holding off quite a, quite a big chunk of the enemy fleet by simply uh, applying smoke as a scare tactics and uh, you know just raining fire on the enemy battleships until they decided to move to a different area of the map. The Russian destroyer guns are excellent when it comes to hunting other destroyers. Um, you can deal a lot of damage mainly due to their high rate of fire and uh, pretty decent HE damage. But also you really shouldn't discount the AP rounds, uh, they do wonders on cruisers that decide to give you their broadsides and uh, you can score multiple citadel hits while attacking them. And also uh, remember that you can deal a lot of damage to uh, the battleship's superstructures 
especially if you spot a battleship that um, seems to not have taken any damage before you decided to engage it. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and if you did, I would like to recommend to you uh, watching another one of mine, uh, this time from the other perspective. Uh, in this video I explain how to be an efficient destroyer hunter in a tier 8 American New Orleans cruiser and the link to this video should be popping in the top right corner of the screen right now. And also if you did like this video please do give it a like down below. It helps the channel out immensely. And also think about hitting the subscribe button if you'd like to see more, some more of my materials. So for now, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the open seas.